Hi everyone, happy Sunday. I'm your host, Carla Salinas, and you are watching Take 5. We have a great show for you guys today, but first things first, I want to welcome all noodle lovers and ice cream enthusiasts to Kokoro in Brownsville. Let's head inside. Today we're diving chopsticks first into the world of self-serve ramen and taiyaki ice cream and we're about to embark on a culinary adventure where you're the master chef of your own ramen bowl. This is owner Tanya Mendoza who first opened her doors to the community just a few weeks ago. We wanted like, to bring a new concept to Brownsville and I guess the valley as well because uh, uh, we wanted a place family friendly and uh, like a destination restaurant that you can, you can go with your family or with friends and, and have an experience, right? It was in the kitchen cooking with her kids when Tanya first dreamed up the concept that would become the talk of the city of Brownsville. And just this idea came up, what if we have an instant noodle bar and we can add toppings and then I started like seeing on TikTok and all that stuff, like these Korean machines that you can cook your own noodles. And that's what, like, it got my, my attention, right? This is truly a ramen lover's dream come true. First, you pick from the huge wall of ramen packages, and then you pick your toppings, and you get cooking. All this talk about delicious ramen has got my taste buds tingling and my stomach growling, so what's a host to do? Well, it's time to roll up my sleeves and be the chef of my own ramen bowl. All right, here we go. That is delicious. <gasps> that's spicy. Four or five minutes, your meal is done. So that's like super cool because even kids can do it. Of course, supervised by parents. The, the, the machines are very safe for, for, for everybody. The delights don't end with savory noodles. Their taiyaki ice cream is a sweet escape that's equally as exciting. We wanted we wanted something different, like I said. So yes, it is ice cream, but we we have these fish-shaped uh, waffles and we put them on top of the of the ice cream. They're taiyakis, they're Japanese. The taiyaki is warm and then the ice cream is cold, so it's a it's a cool mixture of both. So for my ice cream, we chose some Fruit Loops, M&Ms, some mochi, and even some Jello bits. That's right, it was an ice cream topping party and I was the guest of honor. What I want, of course, it's uh, I want to take this experience like further. Because we're the first in the valley. I don't know in Texas, but I know we're the first in San Little Bar in, in, in the valley. And I want to take it to San Antonio, I don't know, places, because it's new, I, I've never seen this. And there you have it, from crafting our own ramen masterpieces to indulging in the incredible ice cream, Kokoro has truly been a flavor-packed journey. And that's a wrap on our self-serve ramen adventure, but yours still awaits. It's 2024 and some of us may have to be happier on our resolution list. Joining us today is a woman who calls herself the joy activator. Dina Sabnani is a motivational speaker and she joins us today. Dina, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's exciting to be here today. So tell us a little bit about the joy activator. Sure, so I am a transformational speaker. I host well-being workshops, international bestseller, a certified Theta healer, and just someone who loves to be happy and spread that around. And so how did this get started? Um, growing up, I was always considered the happy chick and I saw life with rose colored glasses, let's say, but I knew the reality of life. And as I grew, I got a degree in communications and then um, got certified in Theta Healing and always was the person that was able to understand that happiness is a choice we need to make and no matter what went on in my life I chose happy and that's like my passion and purpose in this planet is to be a lighthouse of joy and the joy activator came about probably two years ago when I was uh, thinking of something to use as a handle for Instagram. Oh, that's amazing. And so, you know, we're in the new year. This is empowering the RGV. We want to empower our viewers Absolutely. to be happier. What is something that they can do at home um, to bring more joy into their life? 
There are a couple of things they can do. One really, really powerful thing is having a gratitude journal. Oh. It really makes a difference when you are focused on things that you can be thankful for. Just a moment of gratitude. Send intentions for your day, like send love to the people you're going to meet. When you do that, you're setting yourself up for success. Ooh, I love all those um, ideas. So if somebody's watching right now and they want to talk to you, they want to, you know, get some more joy in their life, how do they go about that? Sure. Um, I'm on LinkedIn under Dina Subnani. I'm also on Instagram uh, as The Joy Activator. You can also find me on Facebook. I have a public profile. Either my name or uh, Dina Subnani, The Joy Activator, is my business page. And people can reach out. I do one on one sessions and I work with corporates in doing well being workshops. Yeah, so you go to businesses and yes. help them because it, it helps the employee. 100%. So I have a saying that says happy employees equals healthy profits. And that's the bottom line, right? For people, for corporations at least, they want to make sure they're productive. And if you pour into your team, your employees, making sure they are heard, making sure they know that they make a difference and doing things to help with their mental health, you know, they're more productive, they're more loyal, and they will do more for the company than if they're not looked after. All right, well, there you heard it. Business owners, anybody in general looking for joy, you can reach out to The Joy Activator on Instagram, The Joy Activator, or find her on LinkedIn, Dina Sabnani. Dina, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Is being active one of your New Year's resolutions? Well, Tribe Cycle in McAllen is giving you an experience one ride at a time. Hey everyone, we're here at Tribe Cycle in McAllen. I'm with the owner, Krista Thomas. First of all, nice name. Thank you so much. Yeah, <laughs> Trista, Krista. It's, yeah, I know, it's awesome. It's gonna be a little, we're like a little duo today. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to be here and talk about cycling. Now tell me the benefits about cycling. Um, so there's so many benefits to cycling. Uh, first off, the physical, obviously, you know, cardiovascular health is so important. Um, so this is a really great workout, it really gets your heart uh, nice and strong, builds that lung capacity as well. Um, but on top of that, there's a lot of benefits as far as like mental health. I think a lot of people really thrive in this environment just because you're surrounded by a group of people who want the same sort of workout as you. Um, so it's very motivating to be with other people who make you stronger, whether they even realize it or not. Is that kind of what drew you to open up a place like this? Or tell me about, you know, you starting up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, well, the name Tribe itself is, um, I made that on purpose. You know, I wanted a community of like-minded individuals um, and a really, like, inspiring place to be. Um, and that was something that I felt was lacking as far as, like, cycling goes down here. Can you take me through kind of like a class session and how it works? We'll get you situated with your shoes because all of our bikes do require that you clip in with some cycling shoes. Um, so we'll get your shoes ready, um, we'll take you to your bike, we'll get you adjusted so you won't just walk in here, you know, blinded and like not knowing what's going on. You'll always have someone here with you to guide you from start to finish. It's a really high intensity cardio class, but it's so enjoyable, it goes by like that. I know, and you were telling me a little bit that it's kind of like a dance as well. Exactly, yeah. It's definitely like a dance class. Some people even call it like a dance class. They don't even say like it's cycling. Um, but definitely having people with you, having the tribe with you is yeah. the funnest part of it all. Well, I'm super excited to see how this class works. Will you go ahead and, you know, instruct me a little bit? I would love to. Oh, I would awesome. love to, okay, yeah. Okay, let's do it. So I want you to put your hands right here at first position. That's first position here at Tribe. And I want you to kind of match my legs, alrighty? So it's right, left, right, left, right, left. But now we're gonna try to take it out of the saddle. So this is where it starts to get really fun. It's so fun, like if you're tired after work or before work or you've had a long day, this is that place where you can just come, let loose, have fun, sweat it off. I love that. Now where can people find you guys? So we are located at 6100 North 10th Street, Suite G. We are Tribe Cycle, T-R-Y-B-E, C-Y-C-L-E, uh, tribecycle.com. And then we also have the mobile app, 
Tribe Indoor Cycling. That's where you can book all your classes. Thank you so much, Krista. Thank you. Oh, had thank so you. much fun. Me too. <laughs> oh, great job. When Tech 5 returns, this artist is telling stories through Pi and all of the details coming up in just two minutes. If you're a fan of pies and storytelling, well, this one's for you. Once upon a pie, there was an amazing woman who loved to read about fairy tales. But she fell into a dark hole during hard times in her life where she started to question everything. That's when she turned to her faith and found a passion for baking and pie. She started winning awards for her pies and she found a true artist in herself through making these pies that the whole town seemed to love. And now she hopes to one day open a place she can call her own to share her pies with the world. Well, that woman is actually Kristen Garcia and the story you just saw was completely animated by her through hours and hours of hard work in the kitchen. I have to cut out the pieces of dough and paint them and then bake them. And then once they're baked and ready, I can put them on the pie and move them piece by piece until I, and I take pictures each way. And so then I put the photos all together and it turns into the animation. And how long did it take you to make this animation? This animation took me about four days. Yeah, it's from beginning to end, so with the pie and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. To really appreciate this pie, we're going to have to hit the rewind button so we can really take a closer look at this pie animation. It starts out with a girl walking um, along a path, but she's reading a book, which is supposed to be me, and I call this Kristen in Wonderland. Did you notice the tree and the citrus fruits made out of tiny pieces of pie? Well, that's because Kristen lived in an orchard her whole life, and citrus really means a lot to her family. All right, so you know what happens, Kristen falls in that hole, but did you notice those tiny teardrops baked and hand-painted one by one? And she reaches for a book, which is the Bible, and she opens it, and it becomes like her umbrella that stops her fall. And that's for the Lord that just stopped my um, descent. And, he, and then he gave me the idea of just making pies. Pay attention to that paintbrush on the left. It's dipped into the blue paint and then moved to the pie within the pie to make that line. That tiny detail in itself took Kristen hours of hard work. And then of course, the grand reveal of her hope of a storefront. Check out the citrus tree. Pretty cool, right? Kristen has been animating pies for about two years, but she's been baking pies for a whole lot longer than that. But like a good fairy tale, it all started on one cloudy day with one magical pie. One pie, which was my grandmother's uh, apple pie. And uh, when after she passed away, I just missed having her pie there at Thanksgiving. And so I wanted to learn how to make pies. And thankfully, my uncle had written the recipe down and he handed it to me, and so I was able to learn how to make her apple pie from that. And I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna make pies for people or for Instagram, I need to make my own dough. These pies look amazing, and they even taste amazing, so our story today ends, but Kristen's story is only just beginning and you can follow along with her on social media as she paints the town apple red, one pie at a time. You've probably seen satisfying slime videos, I know I have. Today joining us is Maritza Navarro from Crazy Slime RGB to tell us about this sensation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Thank Maritza. Thank you for having us. Okay, so what kind of slime are we making today? We're doing fluffy slime today. Okay, let's get started. Ooh, I'm so excited. What's the first step? Um, you're gonna pour the bottle of glue in your container. Okay, so we each have our glue The whole here. one? Yes. All oh, of it? Yeah, you can take off the... Oh, oh okay, 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 yeah. Easier. That'll be easier. So tell us about Crazy Slime RGB. How long have you guys been around? Um, we're coming up on our anniversary in a couple of months, so we're really excited about that. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. This is this is already so fun already. Yes. Um, I didn't even know it was glue <laughs> to start with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's the main ingredient, glue. Really? Okay. okay. So we've got our glue in. What's our next step? Okay, now we are going to do like a top layer of shaving cream. Okay. And it'll be just covered the just entire on top. top. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, okay now you can pick uh, what scents you want or what colors, and it'll mm. be just like a drop of the color, okay. and you can do like half a cap. So now we're going to mix and just make sure all of our ingredients are mixed together okay, before perfect. we start activating it. <laughs> what inspires you to make these different kinds of slimes? Um, basically just the snacks that we like to eat. Um, yes. I feel like the elote, I love elote and like dagancito, our kids love paleta payaso. So we kind of mix some of our favorite snacks into. And you make everything yourself, right? Yes, my husband and I do. Oh, it's so cool and it's really realistic. I almost wanted to eat it. Oh, yeah, no. Thank you. <laughs> Once everything's mixed, you're gonna go ahead and activate your slime. Okay. And we're gonna do two teaspoons of activator. Okay, so we have our little things right here. What do you think makes a good slime? Oh, I think just the um, being able to play with it. Um, sometimes some slimes are really sticky and if you do get a sticky slime, the good thing about that is that it comes with an activator spray. You can ah. go ahead and activate your, your slime. What's your favorite slime, Maritza? My favorite slime is the cloud slime. And it's um, this one we have here on top. I just love how it drizzles, um, how you, it's so easy to play with. And it's really easy like as a beginner slime. Like for younger kids, it's, it's the best. I love it. Ooh. I love the cloud slime. Okay, and now you're gonna start mixing it. Okay. And... Ooh. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you this want... feels crazy, guys. Oh my god, it's <gasps> really slimy. I like to um, fold it in. Fold it in. Okay. Look at that. It's no longer sticking to my that hands. Here we go. Yes. Now you can choose. what well, we're gonna call it toppings or okay. decorations. Okay, Marita, well, I'm gonna continue playing with this all day, yes, but one course. more time, where can people find you if they do wanna find these slimes? Um, we have our online stores, crazyslimergb.com, and we are located inside the Plaza Mall. Um, one location is in front of Starbucks and Sara, and our second location is opening um, Tuesday, July the 18th, in front of Sephora. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you us. for having us. Thank you. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> Looking to turn your hobbies to careers, this local college is offering specialized degree and classes are starting soon. All the details coming up in just two minutes. The following segment is supported by South Texas College. Have a love for cooking? This school has a career opportunity for you with their culinary arts program. Did you know that STC has a culinary program? Well, here to talk to us all about that is instructor Marco Cantu. Thank you so much for having us here today. Thank you for having us. I'm so excited to talk about the programs you offer at the culinary program. Now, tell me what can students choose from? Okay, so right now we are excited to be able to provide a new program. We offer uh, associates and certificates, uh, certificates in culinary arts and baking. And for the socials, we have same thing, culinary arts, baking, and we're also offering restaurant management now. Can you walk me through how a class would look like? So for the uh, beginner's classes, you start with the basics, uh, learning how to handle your knife, uh, sanitation, safety. Once you move from the basics, you can start learning to how to produce your own recipes, mass production, learning how to cost, how to take care of your customers, take care of your people. So we start from baking, into catering services, into management. So you have a little bit of everything for you to go out of the program and being able to uh, fully do your job. Now, you were telling me earlier that you actually went through the program. How does it feel to, you know, now be an instructor? So it's very exciting to see that the program has grown a lot. When I was a student here, our facilities was, was big, but now that we have more people coming in, we have uh, more graduates, we're able to expand into different kitchens. We have uh, three facilities here at the school, and now we also offer classes in West Laco. So for the people that come from uh, the Brunswick area a little further away, they can actually have the classes closer to them. Wow, that's really awesome. So it's very accessible to anybody in the valley. And so how long are the classes or to get that certificate? Okay, so for the certificate, it's a year of classes and for the associates will be two. And the cool thing about that is that if you're going to the certificate and you finish your certificate, the class that you have in your certificate will also move into your associates. So if you decide at the end, you know, I wanna be able to take my associates now, you're already on the halfway of the associates. And we also offer uh, one of the classes will give you the uh, on-site experience. So you're already working in a, in a company where they teach you the basics, things that you might 
not uh, be accustomed to. So you have a, once you graduate, you already have a, some uh, experience on the job. So what are some students making in the classes? So for uh, myself, that I, I'm, I'm one of the newest faculties here, um, we start from fresh pastas, uh, fresh breads, fresh everything. Once you move into uh, more advanced programs, you can see international cuisine. And also, once you get into the, for the classes as well for baking, you learn to production, do mass production, you do 100 cupcakes in class, you do a lot of things, right? Wow, that's amazing. So where can students, you know, register for these classes? So to register, you can go to uh, the South STC website, which would be southtexascollege.edu, or they can also call 855-GO-TO-STC, uh, uh, and they should get that information as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up on Take 5, this Edinburgh business is paying it forward. Channel 5 News Morning anchor Trey Serna joins us for Made in the 956 Extra. Hey guys, we're back with another Made in the 956 Extra with Channel 5 News anchor Trey Serna. Trey, so this week we're talking about a valley business that's working really hard to give back to our community. So tell us a little bit about this. Yes, I'm so excited about this one. So this is called Barajas. It's a restaurant in Edinburgh. And I talked to Omar Maldonado about it and they're giving back in such a unique way. So every Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, kids eat free. But if you show up and you don't have a kid, they mark a tally and then at the end of the week, they add all those numbers up of the people who showed up without children and they pay it forward and they make those meals and deliver them to the school district, to kids who need them. So like what a just an easy way to give back and just, I mean, you go eat and just, you know, get back to the community in such a unique way. The, absolutely, that's so wonderful that they're able to do that for our community. And you know what? We got to see some video yes. of those children getting those free meals. And it's so exciting to see those faces on them. And they're just so happy. So It really is. And Omar even told me that, you know, something really stood out what he said. He says, you know, you reach an age sometimes where giving back means so much more. And he says, you know, it's just a beautiful to see the smile on their faces and just giving back to the community in that way. So. Well, Trey, where can people go if they do want to support? Yes, they're in Edinburgh. Go check them out. Also, look them up on Facebook, Barrel House Kitchen and Bar. You can find them there. Go to their website. And, uh, yeah, lots of good, good food and drinks out there. So go check them out. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, Trey. Thank you for having me. That's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for spending your weekend with us. We'll be back next week. Until then, follow us on social media at take5.caregv. Have a great week, guys.